Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In this lesson, we will learn about ultraviolet and visible spectroscopy. This spectroscopy is observed as a result of electronic transition between the molecules and the wavelength corresponding to visible region usually lies between 400 to 700 nanometers. Now because the white light is a mixture of light of all colors, this color chart shows you about each color corresponding to each wavelength. For instance, the wavelength corresponding to 430 to 490 belongs to the blue region of the white light. And usually we observe the color of the object corresponding to the wavelength of the absorption of light. For instance, the plants appear green. Why? Because the chlorophyll present in plants absorbs the red region. Now once it's absorbed the red region, the corresponding color is green which is opposite to the red region and that's why plant appears green. Now how do these transitions take place? And usually these electronic transitions are pi to pi star and n to pi star transitions. So both pi is the bonding orbital and pi star is antibonding orbitals. And both these orbitals are formed by the overlap of atomic orbitals px and py. And n is non-bonding electrons. So n non-bonding orbitals are the lone pair of electrons. In this case, the oxygen has lone pairs. So the transition corresponds to from n to pi star. Now both this C double bond C which is the alkene group results in pi to pi star transition. Now because there is no lone pair here that is why you cannot observe n to pi star transition. On the other hand for the compounds containing carbonyl groups you do observe n to pi star transitions. Now these groups C double bond C, the alkenic group or the carbonyl group C double bond O are called chromophores why? Because the presence of these groups are responsible for the color of many substances. Now let us closely look into pi to pi star transition. Now this is the lowest energy which is formed by the positive overlap of atomic orbitals px and py for pi case and then the sigma orbitals are formed by the overlap of s orbitals. And there are two electrons present in sigma orbital and two electrons present in pi orbital. This is known as HOMO, the highest occupied molecular orbital. And LUMO is the empty orbital which is pi star, the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. That's why pi star is LUMO and not sigma star because pi star is the lowest energy unoccupied molecular orbital. What will happen when you apply the radiation corresponds to this energy difference delta E? The electron present in pi will get excited to pi star. This is known as pi to pi star transition which results in the absorption process. Now just to be clear the relationship of delta E with wavelength. So delta E is H nu where nu is the frequency and H is the Planck's constant. In terms of wavelength it will be H C by lambda. Again C is speed of light it's a constant. Planck's constant is H and delta E is inversely related to wavelength. So once the electrons absorbs this energy corresponds to the energy difference between pi and pi star the absorption takes place which is pi to pi star transition and this results in the formation of electronic absorption bands. So let us now look into how those bands look like. Now this is the absorbent spectra results in the transition of pi to pi star. So as you can see, you have the intense transition corresponds to this wavelength. So this is lambda max and this belongs to the maximum absorbance. 
Now the question is how is the intensity of this transition varies or what are the factors corresponds to the intensity of electronic transition. That is explained by means of Frank Codon principle. Now this is the ground state of the molecule, the ground electronic state and this is the excited state of the molecule. So how the intensity measure Frank Codon principle says when the electron get excited from the lowest vibrational level of this ground state and the vibrational level it reaches to the excited state that vertical transition is the most intense transition. So just to repeat the most intense transition takes place from the ground state with the lowest vibrational state of the molecule to the higher vibrational energy state of the molecule in the excited state. And depending on the internuclear separation, these potential energy graph can vary and hence the intensity of transition can also vary. So you can have transition to various vibrational level of the molecule. But the important point to note is the most intense will be the one which is this first one where it reaches from this ground state to the one in the higher vibrational energy level state. This is known as Frank Codon principle. Now let us do some of the problems corresponding to this. Now this is one of the example which shows cumarin 1 correspond to this molecule and this is cumarin 6. The question is which spectra belongs to this cumarin 6. Now if you can look into these molecule, what is the lambda max for A spectra? So it's around 450 nanometers. And what is the lambda max for the second case? It is around 375 nanometers. Now this is wavelength and this is molar extension coefficient. So just to be clear, this is not 5, it's actually 5 times 1000, 5000. So you see that the molar extension coefficient for A spectra is higher, it's 50,000 for the maximum absorbance and then it's around 25,000 for the second case. So in first case, lambda max for A is 450 nanometers and this is for B, it is 375 nanometers. Absorbance depends on many factors. The first one is the extent of conjugation. So the extent of conjugation changes the energy gap between HOMO and LUMO. As you can easily see for Cumarin 6, it has more extensive conjugation. And as we know that Delta E is inversely related to Lambda. So the energy difference for more conjugate molecule is minimum which means that the wavelength is maximum. So the spectra belongs to cumarin 6 is this A where the lambda max is more. So just to be again repeat the extent of conjugation is one of the important factor which is being observed in cumarin 6 and it depends on the energy gap for pi to pi star transition. The delta E lowers down with the extensive pi conjugation and since delta E is Hc by lambda the numerator is a constant because Planck's constant has a value and then C has a value which means that delta E is inversely related to wavelength. So if you have high extensive conjugation, the energy difference lowers down which means that the lambda max is higher. If you look into these two species, cumarin 6 has extensive conjugation, therefore the spectra corresponding to maximum lambda max will belong to this species. Now let's move to another question. What color is methyl orange at pH 3 and 4.4? Now this is an absorbent spectra corresponds to pH 3. This is the absorbent spectra corresponds to pH 4.4. Now the question is, do you think that the methyl orange shows same color at these two different species? The answer is no. 
So what is the color at pH 3? Let us look into that. Now the lambda max corresponds to pH 3 is 450 nanometers. And the lambda max corresponds to pH 4 for methyl orange is around 530 nanometers. As I said, you always observe the color opposite to the absorbed light. Now for pH, 4, pH 3, the absorbance is around 450 nanometers. 450 nanometers belongs to this blue region. And what is the color complementary to blue? That means the color opposite which is orange. Which means that methyl orange shows orange color at pH 3. Now let's look into pH 4.4. At pH 4.4, the absorbance max, the lambda max is 530 nanometers, which corresponds to this green region. If we look into this color chart. And what is the color opposite to this green region? It's red. So methyl orange shows red color at pH 4.4. So I hope you understand this concept.